Welcome to your gratuitous big tough Jeep sitting in front of a giant pile of dirt in a off-road looking environment intro to the video. I will not be doing any off-road in this vehicle, I guess other than getting it out of this construction area. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be whether or not a Robicon JL Jeep is tolerable as a daily family vehicle. What are some of the pros? What are some of the cons? And how much fun can you actually have in these things? And really, is it worth something like this if you're not going to be anywhere near any off-road? I'm Average Joe at skillfreak.com. Stick around, let's check it out. First, let me start by saying this is not my Jeep. In Canada, to option these things out, about $70,000 taxes in, in Ontario. That's a lot of money, guys, 70 grand. You can buy a lot of stuff for 70 grand. But would you spend that kind of money on this big bad boy here in an area where you're not going to off-road or you have the odd construction site that you can show your friends as you drive over, which I may have done a couple times this weekend. Uh, but would you spend that kind of money and is this vehicle actually worth something like that? Well, I guess cost is relative. You have to figure out what it's worth to you. But for me, spoiler alert, Absolutely. Oh my God. I've done a lot of research on some Jeeps over the past few years just to figure out what would I do if I were to buy one, uh, comparing the Sport versus the Sahara versus the Robicon. And uh, this is how I would get it, except for I would probably get it in white. To talk about some of the things that go on with these things, of course, when you get the vehicle from the rental company or the dealership, as I uh, got this from a rental company, um, the top and the doors are, of course, going to be on it. Well, what does that mean for you? Uh, 24 minutes is what it took me to get all that stuff off here. 12 minutes for the doors. One bolt, two bolt, three bolt. So three per door and eight to take the roof off. Uh, 12 minutes for the doors, 12 minutes for the roof. My wife helped me just kind of pick it up and go set it gently on the garage floor. Heaviest part of the roof I find is the glass on the back and the sides. So as long as you kind of hover it correctly and because it's all fiberglass, it sits very well. I just laid a blanket down to make sure I didn't scratch anything. The doors are ultra light on these things because these JLs, the doors are made out of aluminum. So one arm, you pick it up and you go and set it down. Of course, I use the mats that were in it to set them on top of so I don't scratch any of the paint off of it because yes, this is not going to be the easiest paint to touch up. So I want to protect it as much as I can. It is a rental. But again, we talk about the idea of can this thing be used as a daily? Is it polite enough on the road that you don't get jarred around too much or does it have enough space or enough use? Let's show you a few things. Cargo space is obviously a big thing. If you're gonna use this as a family vehicle, you need space. It's got a lot of it, right? There is the big tire on the back, but again, just open it up. Tire is attached to the back door. Normally, if the top was on here, you would open up the glass and bang, you've got all of this. Now, this one here is updated with the huge stereo system and the huge screen, so the subwoofer is in the back. Sounds really good. I really only used it just to test it because, I mean, why would I wanna pollute everybody else with my Avenged Sevenfold, right? Now, under the back down here, you do have a lot of place to hide stuff. Of course, it already holds the bolts for the door, the bolts for the roof, they're all tucked in there, and the tool kit to do it all is all in the glove compartment. It even has the space to put all the bolts here if you wanna take the windshield off, which I definitely will not be doing. Anything you put down there though, when this thing is closed and this thing is locked up, you're not gonna get uh, anybody stealing it from you because as you can see here, this lip, gets closed up by that. So as long as this thing is locked, your personals are good back there. So maybe you've got your kid's uh, Thor blanket for the late drives and that's like one of his prized possessions and you don't want someone to walk away with it. Or you got your hoodie or you got your wallet or you got something in there. You can't lift the front part up because it slides in and out to lock in. So once that's closed, you are rock and roll. Inside the Jeep, you've got a lot of really, really great stuff. So first of all, this one is a push button start, but it also still has a switchblade key. Why? Well, the glove compartment, which this is pretty neat, carries the full tool kit to be able to take your roof and your doors off. And then whatever other personal paperwork you got stuffed in there, well, that's locking so no one can get at your stuff. This center console right here, you lift up the top section, you've got change, maybe your wallet. This entire humongous section, this has gotta be, I don't know, that deep. 
I can tell you from experience that this will fit a Happy Meal for McDonald's and it's chocolate milk while your kid is freaking out so you gotta go get him something to eat. Of course this as well locks up so that you are now limited to how much garbage you carry with you uh, but all your stuff is locked up while you're gone. Now this key while you're driving, no problem. It perfectly fits right here in the center where the cup holders go. But you know what else fits in here? Your cell phone. So you can put your cell phone, I got an eight plus with a case on it. It fits perfect, slid into here so that you got your two drinks and your cell phone. You put your cable out of the side, plug it into here. That way you don't have wires and anything hanging all over the dash. You do have a USB port in the center console, but in the middle here, you also have a USB, a USB-C and an aux cable for all your tunes. This giant screen, of course, is going to show you everything. It's got your reverse camera, it's got your navigation, it's got your Apple CarPlay, it has your Android Auto, so your tunes, everything is going to blast out of here. Very nice screen. The reverse camera, ultra, ultra clear, so that's pretty cool. Of course, this being a Robicon, you've got your front and rear locking diff, your rear locking diff, your disconnecting sway bar, all your window controls in the middle because they don't put the electronics in the doors, and then this is your entire, well, HVAC, your uh, air conditioning and heating system, as well as your off-road stuff, hill descent. Oh, this thing does have auto on off start, which is uh, really, really, really good. And of course it is a push button start as well. The steering wheel is an enormously, wonderfully beautiful large size, which I know sounds weird, but when you're driving a vehicle that you need to have good steering for torque, if you were to do it off-road, it helps. And then of course, your passenger has an O-crap handle here, as well as up here, and then you have one up here to get yourself in and out of the Jeep. No problem. Easy to get a hold of your two-wheel, your four-wheel, your four-wheel low, if you use it. And then of course, with the automatic, you've got a manual control as well, which is amazing. What does this all mean? Well, if you're not off-roading, uh, this makes you go forward, this turns up your radio, and uh, this steers the vehicle. I guess that's kind of really all you need to know about that one, right? Oh, and you have an absolute ton of leg room while the people in the back still have a ton of space. As far as room in the back, there's a lot of it. My five and a half year old has his new seat we put in the middle. It's only in the middle because we were a little freaked out about him sitting too close to the side and throwing stuff out or his, his member of the Thor blanket uh, getting taken off. So we threw him in the middle. He likes it better because he can see out the front windshield. But with this in the middle and him in it, we were still able to put two Full-size adults, not mini-size adults, full-size adults in both sides to head down to Ribfest, and everybody had a ton of space in the front and the rear, which is good because, I mean, every once in a while you got to make friends and stuff with you, right? In the back being a Rubicon as well, you can't see it because of the angle. There is a power outlet in the back, USB port in case he's got to charge his iPad, speakers up on the top, and as we mentioned, subwoofer in the back. So a lot of room. Just grab on, and ta-da. I'm six foot. My wife's got that seat all the way back. I still have about a half inch before I hit the back of the seat. Uh, it's plastic and uh, I got tons of headroom. Another thing when you're putting your kit in, it's pretty neat because you don't have to sit in here. You don't have to worry about the roof. You're pretty clear on that one too. Good size space for the family or lay them down and lay something bigger in here. If you've got, uh, I don't know, you go to Home Depot or something, you need more space. You can do that too. The seats do fold down, but we're talking family uses here good space for the family. Definitely a big part, say hi Bear. Hi. Definitely a big part of this being a family vehicle is whether or not your kids can get in it. Bear, show us how we get in the Jeep. That's how. That's how, is that easy? Yeah. And how do you get out? John, high five bud. So that's a big thing, right? It's easy to it, do. It's not a family vehicle if your family can't get in it. And I mean, being a parent, we've just recently switched to like the booster chair, so it makes life a lot easier to get the kid in and out of the vehicle. We've waited a long time for this point where he can get in and buckle himself in. Uh, so yeah, check on the list that your five and a half year old can get in it. All right, Bear, let's load up. We're going for a drive. Of course, a very big part with being your daily driver is how drivable is it? I mean, that, that's a really, really big question. I mean, it, it, my SI uh, is almost backbreaking at some points with how stiff my suspension can be. Tosh's car, we've got your suspension modified too, so it, it can be kind of stiff. Still livable from day to day, but there are some days where it's like, man, maybe we should put the stock suspension back on these things again. 
But the Jeep, the, the, the big question is when you're looking at something like this, because they are kind of more of a rugged vehicle, or you know, maybe they're a little wishy-washy in their suspension if you take some corners a little bit hard. Tosh, I'm gonna lean on your opinion. What do you feel about the drive of these things? I love it. It's a little bit bad, like it's bouncy. It reminds me of driving in the F-150. Yeah. But um, it's, I, it's an easy drive. Yeah, and it, it's you, the bumps, right? Okay, there's a bump, cool, you got it. Uh, that happens. Um, traffic, uh, construction zones, it's not really that bad. No. When I say not that bad, I mean it's actually fairly good. The, the comfort in these things is absolutely amazing and it's great to sit up nice and high again. Yeah. The kid can see absolutely everything, which definitely makes for a more fun of a drive. Now, Tosh, you kind of said something earlier that really that really kind of got me. It really kind of sunk in. The, the, I, I couldn't put it into words, but you did put it into words. What was your thoughts on having a Jeep? Well, I, I don't know, like, Matt, having it for, like, four days now, and this has been the weekend, like, of the summer. It's the summer weekend. Like, it feels the doors off, the roof off, the sun shining. It just feels like this would be the epitome of what the summer is. Cruising in the Jeep with the breeze, doors off, roof off, tunes going. Just, it's just what summer should be in my mind. And one of the things that she said before that really kind of hit me was she mentioned that it's a level of freedom that yeah, we have. Yeah. And yes, if we had known, because this was last minute that we yeah. were able to get this thing. We've been trying for months to get this thing, but good luck getting a Jeep from a rental company. Uh, everybody wants this uh, yeah. thing. You usually have to book it a few months in advance, but we managed to get lucky. Now, if we had planned better, maybe we could have just got lost, just yeah. left and just filled the tank because it's a big tank and just and left yep and then and then booked an airbnb where we landed and we were just free to go anywhere and do anything now given the fact that this thing does have some off-road capability we could have wound up doing some crazy things yeah but but the but it's it's interesting knowing that if we were to have owned this and at any time could just do that just leave we could just go yeah just do what we wanted to do fill up the back and go yeah so it, it's really interesting in the sense that yes you can drive this thing day to day. We can take the kid to practice. We can take him to school. Rain, snow, all that stuff. Or you know what? What if we just wanted to hop in and drive for four hours and go up north or, yep. or, or go into the States and go onto some crazy trails or go meet some people, something like that. It, quite fascinating how well this thing is put together. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a lot of fun potential. A, a ton. Right, Bear? Yeah. Bear, do you like this Jeep? I know, me too, buddy. A concern that we had when it came time to taking off the roof, the doors, everything was, how windy was it going to be for him? I mean, I have a windshield. We, we get very little wind on us, but in the back, I mean, really, it just come over. It should swoop back in. But as you can see, calm, cool, collected bear back there doesn't seem to be a problem at all. His hat is, you know, like a teenager just sitting on top of his head. There's a feather in there. Nothing's going anywhere. We're going 54 kilometers an hour right now, and he's his bangs aren't even moving. He's not being affected. So there's no concern with the wind, which is pretty awesome. We were getting it up to 80. There was really no concern about it. Now, one thing that I do want to note is when you are, uh, I'll say you leave the house right now, it's 29 degrees at seven o'clock at night. Remember guys, 29 degrees Celsius at seven o'clock at night. Last night we left the house, it was 28 when we left the house. Two hours later, it was 18 by the time we made yeah. it to Niagara Falls. It, it dropped right down, the closer, but the closer we got to the river. Yeah, the closer we got, but so I didn't really think I was gonna need heated seats and a heated steering wheel in August, but it certainly did help get us through that spot. Yeah. And then we of course had, uh, look, it's, it's so comfortable back there for him. He's passed out. He's out. So, yes, so, uh, you got to be mindful of the fact that if you've got no roof, no doors, and you're taking a drive, even at the beginning of August, it could get quick, or it could get cold quick, yeah. depending on where you're going, so please be prepared. That's why when I showed you in that cargo area, we had his Thor blanket, which is ready to go on him at any moment. We've also got hoodies for us ready to go at any moment if we're out too late, and it gets too cold. A little chilly. One very real fact is the idea that when you are driving with no doors on, there is a very, very clear feeling of vulnerability. Like you have 
no door right here. You are extremely exposed. Now, the seatbelt's gonna keep you from falling out. You've got a handle to hang on to and a, a steering wheel and a center console, but you do feel quite exposed. And also, depending on how you feel about it, the ground is right there. You are only feet away from something traveling that if something were to happen, you're going down and you're not getting back up very easily. So it does take a, a little, when I say a little, I mean like, like, I don't know, three minutes to get used to it, but it is a certain level of like, ah, the ground is right there, which is again, why we put him in the middle of the back seat because we're worried about him throwing things out or something coming in the side. And maybe some truck flies by and just chucks a rock at you. I've definitely heard over the past few days, the odd rock hit the side of the vehicle either coming off my own tires or off of something else getting bounced off the ground. So you have to be comfortable with the idea. Uh, Tosh has done the research to find out that when we do get our Jeep, we will be getting those metal half doors uh, just to kind of keep you from falling out. Well, I worry about Bear. Because, you know, he is five, so. Five and a half. Well, five and a half, so he may decide, hey, let's undo my seatbelt. Like, I, I, that's in the back of my head. He's not a, you know, he's a smart kid, but I always worry. Yeah, and it, it makes sense. I mean, because kids are kids are learning and he doesn't learn what it's like to undo the seatbelt and fall out of the Jeep until he does it. And uh, we're not gonna go that far. <laughs> Well, we don't have a lot of off-road in the area, at least not stuff that I could get at this weekend. We do have some absolutely amazing, beautiful roads that we can drive on. Normally, I would come out here a couple times a week with the family, uh, with the Jeep. This is even nicer because we sit up that much higher and we're that much closer to nature. We found some deer here the other day, just pulled over and stopped, drive on top of the lawn and just hang out and check out the deer. So I've actually wanted to share this road with you guys for quite a long time. It's just a matter of uh, getting some kind of camera mount where the vehicle stability, or sorry, the, the camera stability doesn't give you motion sickness. Uh, I found that camera out today. It's called Tosh. Hi. Uh, so she's <laughs> holding the camera while I drive. Now I'm gonna bore you with some fuel mileage stuff. So I figured I'd give you something a little bit more entertaining to kind of take a look at. Now, fuel mileage when it comes to a Jeep is always a consideration. I mean, how many people over the years have all talked about how terrible, terrible on gas that Jeeps are, and that may be true. I know that the JKs, the TJs, the YJs, and stuff like that were all pretty bad. Uh, but this one here seems to be actually quite amazing. The, the truck is telling me I've been looking all throughout the weekend. It's averaging between 11.3 to 12.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, what does that mean? Well, I, I can tell you that other SUVs uh, that are nowhere near as capable of this one uh, definitely either meet those numbers or just barely lose against that number. Uh, and I mean, they might be cheaper, but they're nowhere near as capable of what this vehicle can actually do. Now, I do wanna give you a sort of a reference point as to what that actually means as far as mileage compared to my Civic. So again, I have an 09 Civic Si, not the greatest on gas, but if I do the math on that thing, that is 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers, what it cost me. And that one does use premium gas. So it's a dollar-ish, so uh, on average, about a dollar 35 to a dollar 40 per liter to fill that car, as opposed to the dollar 19 to dollar 22 that it costs for regular fuel that it would be to fill this Jeep. So per liter, the Jeep would be less, but when you talk about the idea of, yes, it's got a bigger tank, it's gonna cost more to fill the tank, okay, take all that away. Just per 100 kilometers, the Jeep is gonna cost you roughly $1.20 to $2.40 more per 100 kilometers. And in no way, shape, or form can that SI go off-road or drop over a curb. So that's, you know, that's just what it is. Now, this is my favorite part of this road. I'll shut up for a second. Just enjoy it.
Man, I love Niagara. There is no way that you can talk about a Jeep and I mean, I did talk about how these things are over $70,000 to buy these things brand new. Without talking about the culture that you get in a Jeep. Quite interesting. The moment you step into this thing and you start the ignition and you start driving around, you become a part of a group of people. A community. A, a huge community. You cannot drive by a Jeep without doing some kind of wave. If the doors are closed, just a quick one of these on the steering wheel. If the doors are open, it's out the door. You are now a community with every other person driving a Jeep. You are part of something bigger at that point. So not only are you spending that kind of money, and it doesn't have to be a $70,000 Jeep. It doesn't have to be the Robicon to do it. It could be the Sahara. It could be the Sport. It could be an old super used Jeep. I think you just can't have the Passport or the uh, Patriot or something like that. But there is so much culture, so much, so much camaraderie, I guess you could say, built into the people having Jeeps that, that you just, you can't go anywhere without having someone that you're kind of connected with or that you can talk to or that, you know, you can just lean on or get help from at any point. Quite fascinating. And sometimes you actually feel bad if you're looking at something and you're like, oh, oh I missed saying hi to that Jeep. Damn it. He's going to think I'm not a nice guy or something. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. And then you how feel it all... guilty. And then you, feel, you almost want to turn around and be like, I meant to say hi. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. But it's really, really interesting what the culture becomes. It, it's so much different too, because it, you know, sitting around and surfing the web for as long as I have, it almost seems like a culture of support instead of being a culture of competition, I guess is a good way to say it. So it's a, it's a nice change. And candidly, I think $70,000 is a, it's a good price to pay for something like that. So as you can see, the sun's starting to go down. So that ends the long weekend. That also ends our fun with the Jeep. It's kind of sad to have to take this thing back. Uh, it has been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, when they say it's a Jeep thing, you wouldn't understand. That is an understatement. It, is. it really is. Yeah. There, there are certain things about these things, the culture, the Jeeps, these things and their own. I mean, this color has even grown on me. Bear, what do you think of this color? I like it. It's my second favorite color. It's your second favorite color. What's your first favorite color? Red. Yeah, red is always his favorite color. But this I, has been... What Daddy's wearing. Yeah, well, this is orange. But this has been an absolutely amazing weekend. I hope that I've been able to help you guys understand that this Jeep could definitely be used as your daily family vehicle. Uh, we did, through the afternoon, adventure off to some places in Niagara that we didn't even know existed, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Roads that I could never have even thought passable with no, the Hondas, no, we were able to get through absolutely everything. So I did spoil it at the beginning of the video. Would I buy myself a $70,000 Jeep? Yes. Yes, I absolutely will buy myself a $70,000 Jeep. Just have to figure it out. So guys, thanks for watching, guys. Click like, subscribe, comment below, of course. Share with your communities. And uh, go watch some of the off-road stuff for Jeeps. Have yourself an amazing night. Say bye, Bear. Yeah, but. So I thought the video was over, but Bear had something else to tell us. Go ahead, buddy. On the other side of the river is Happy Valley. Happy Valley. Happy Rolfs. Oh, Happy Rolfs, the petting zoo. Okay. I was confused about that because the other side of that river... It's a lake. Well, that's, that's, that's a lake. And you have on one side, you have the States. And on the other side, you have Toronto. But I get it. Happy Rolfs. It's a petting zoo. Yep. Big park and petting zoo. So bear... Yeah, because... All happy. All happy.